Hello everyone and welcome to Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps and I'm so excited to be with you today. It is June 9th, 2023 and this is episode 93 of Paper Crafting Playdate. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to be with you today. So today is a part two of a two-part series on focal point clusters. So we're going to continue the conversation and exploring how to put together um, focal point clusters that you can plop onto a basic card front and make a beautiful card. So I'm excited. Let's look at the table. And we've got some business to take care of first. So uh, while everybody is gathering for the live part of this video, please say hi if you're brand new to um, me or my videos or not, but say hi, say hi to your stamping friends. Um, and I'm excited to, you know, chat with you is what I'm trying to say. So last week, when I did part one of focal point clusters, I had a little technical difficulty. And so my little tiny segment where I got to showcase the beautiful cards that I have been sent got cut off on YouTube. Um, so I'm gonna re-show those cards because they were so amazing. And I love to showcase your work. So let's look at these beauties here. So, Give some claps to these amazing creators. This is from my friend, Judy Cully. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm gonna show you an idea with this beautiful die cut today. I love this card. Thank you so much, Judy. She never forgets an anniversary. She's so good about that. And I showcased this card last week from my friend, Julie James. She made this beautiful black and white um, elegant card with an embossing folder on that beautiful designer series paper. Love it. Thank you, Julie. Julie. This is from Sue Sheets, Stampin' with Sushi. She created this amazing little background with rubber bands. Isn't that amazing? Pretty greens too. So cute. And this was a card made by um, somebody creative at Stampin' Up. It's from Sarah and Shelly. I love the simplicity of this. This is from that little typewriter stamp set and I can't wait to um, play with that a little bit more. I love how they just colored those three flowers. It's so simple. This is from Tiffany. She made a cascading trifold card. I love this with our beloved Hues of Happiness designer series paper. Thank you so much, Tiffany. And this beautiful card is from Anne. She did the awesome angles template. That's a real favorite, I love it. So beautiful, and the butterfly theme. Love it, love it, love it. This is from Susan. Susan created this adorable little cherry card. I love the colors that you picked too. Putting the um, the red and the blue together is just so like perfectly picnic-y and summery. And I mentioned last week she did two of my very favorite things to do, which are so basic, but I just love them. Um, stamping the, you know, repeating the greeting on the background and then also um, embossing it and giving it a little texture. I love it. Hello everyone. And this is from Alice. She made this fun little Z fold card with a cute little teacup. Thank you so much for your sweet message. I love the colors. So cute. And then this was the one we were kind of blown over by last week. This is from uh, Tamara Moore. And she has a Facebook page and a YouTube. She's one of uh, my Butterfly Friends team members and she created this amazing little, uh, I don't even know what it's called, Tamara. I, I need to connect with you. Um, yeah, I don't even know what it's called, but it sits like this, right? So when you get it, it makes this beautiful, gorgeous display. So like, 
here's a, the side view of it. But then when you go to mail it, it tucks down inside so you can mail it. So cool. We might have to figure this one out. And then these were new this week. Here we have a, a joy fold card from my friend Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. And this was also from Judy Cully. So blessed. Look at this amazing cluster she made. We're gonna have to bring your card back out. I'm gonna do something similar to this today. Um, but I think she put to work what we talked about last week in part one. So what did we talk about last week? Let's just do a quick review. Thank you so much for these amazing cards. I love them, I love them. Um, wait, before I do that, I have to um, talk about Hostess Code. June Hostess Code for me is this lovely sequence right here and what you're earning with a qualifying $50 or more order is this card making kit. We're getting um, 10 note cards and envelopes and then three by three squares of all the brights designer series papers and then some sparkly organdy ribbon and those beautiful pearls. So that is your reward. We love the card kits. The card kits are the bomb. So you have to use the code though. So make sure you use the code if you're gonna place an order. I appreciate it so much. Other In other news, there is a designer series paper sale the whole month of June. All of the designer series papers in the annual catalog current, except for the in color six by six, not the in color, the um, ones that coordinate with these right here. These designer series papers are not 15% off, but all of these other ones are 15% off. We like that. So that is the sale. Just a little sneak peek coming in July. On July 6th, there's gonna be some things released online in the Stampin' Up! store. There's gonna be a, a Christmas um, kind of winter themed stamp set, paper, new embellishments, and then a lovely little bundle of floral loveliness. So stay tuned for that. And then also in June, there's a starter kit uh, plus promotion. So they've added some extra value to the regularly priced $99 starter kit. You can choose $155 um, dollars worth of whatever product you want for $99, get free shipping. This makes you a demonstrator, so you get a discount then on things that you buy. So if you have questions about that, you know where to find me. All right, so that is our news. Now, let's just review what we did um, last week. So we talked about uh, focal point clusters and we talked about how you put them together, and then I kind of broke down, in my mind, this is just Robin, uh, how different types of clusters. And so I kind of came up with these four different kinds, and we covered the basic shape and the tag kind of cluster in part one, and today we're gonna cover um, more of a floral cluster and then an open frame type cluster and they kind of go together. So that's what we're going to do today. So last time we talked about just the basic shape kind of cluster like these and we talked about how you kind of pick those elements um, to create a cluster and then we did um, a tag type of focal point cluster. So much fun. If you didn't get to watch that one, definitely check it out if you want to. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So let me stand up because that's how I work best. Letty, yes, I believe you can get the the die machine. Let me just make sure. You can't go over the 155. Where is that, Mrs. Cutboss? Here we go. That's what I call her. 
yes, the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine is $128. So if that's what you wanted to put in your kit, you could do that and then add a few other things to get to $155. So I've marked different focal point clusters throughout the catalog, just looking at how Stampin' Up! puts them together. So here's a great example of a floral cluster here. Here's another example. So um, when we're creating a cluster, it's a bunch of elements that we put together to make this really kind of interesting layered piece that you can just put right onto a card front. And so um, it's something you could actually make ahead of time if you wanted to, um, just kind of put things together. So here's another example of a floral um, cluster. And it's just like, as opposed to just having a simple kind of focal point where you either stamp or color, a cluster has more pieces to it. So it's a little bit more intricate. Here's an example right here of a basic, a basic shape cluster. Uh, I showed these last week on this page, uh, 102. These are all great little clusters with this yummy, gorgeously made stamp set. Here's an exam another example here. So I kind of broke it down a little bit into what are you looking for as far as the elements to put together into your clusters, right? So um, this is kind of just my way to kind of create a maybe helpful formula for what you might need. So I took some time this week um, to just like make better examples of these elements. And I have a, a P, the PDF that I talked about last week is gonna be available um, this week. So you will be able to download um, the PDF that has this kind of really detailed out what all of these things are. But I thought it would be kind of fun to just look through kind of my little piles. And so this is my base bowl. So these are different bases. So a base can be anything that you want to create your focal point cluster on. Okay, so it can be a tag. It could be just a basic shape of any kind. Okay, so it's a little bit maybe bigger because you're going to mount some things on it, right? Could be just a, a, spray, a big sprig that you're going to put things on. Today we're going to talk about the open frame um, base. Here's that beautiful cutout. That can be a base. So these are bases, okay? So you need one of these to kind of start your cluster. Isn't that bowl fun? I need to store them in a better way. Then you're going to need a secondary shape of some kind to um, add either your greeting or just to add another layer. So this can just be any kind of die or punch, or you can just cut a square. It doesn't have to be a, a die. So it's going to be a little bit smaller than the base, but it's going to um, also be a shape of some kind. So it can be anything. Hope that makes sense. So I just got a bunch cut out. I have a lot of them that are white because I do like to make a lot of times that secondary shape be what I stamp the greeting on. So I made a lot of them basic white, but it doesn't have to be. It can be um, pattern paper um, of some kind or cardstock. So that's the secondary shape bowl. And then there was really no end to um, greenery pieces, right? Um, I could have cut those out forever, but I just did some. I did punches and dies, and I just cut out different, from different stamp sets, different colors, some green, some not, just all different ones some dies okay so you you need to have some greenery pieces these are just examples and then accents are anything they could be the flowers which we're gonna um, kind of create our elements our clusters with 
with flowers mostly today, but you've got all kinds of different um, die cut stamped images. Um, ribbon is an accent. Anything foiled. Those are all accent type torn paper. So these are dies. I just kind of put dies in here. Um, but accents can be more than that. You can just add a little strip of designer series paper. You can add torn paper, um, anything like that, a stamped, a stamped image. But just to kind of get your um, creative juices flowing there. The other thing that could be an accent um, would just be cut out uh, words. And so I took the time to just play with some of the greetings. I This is a, a new bundle of greetings. And so I thought, well, I'm just gonna stamp them all in black and white. I'm gonna emboss them and then also um, do black ink on white paper, just so I have some greetings that I can put on if I don't want to use a secondary shape like this for my greeting. And then number five doesn't need a bowl. These are just our embellishments. So these are all the fun little sequins, enamel dots, jewels, rhinestones, all those things. Those are the embellishments. Okay. Let me move my bowls of fun over here. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to look at this die set here. This is called Paper Florist. And it's, it's brand new to this catalog. It's on page 165. <clears throat> there are already amazing this is it right here. So it's not bundled with anything. It's just a die set by itself. And it is like a flower builder die set. So let's cut some of these out so you can see what they do. Okay, so I'm gonna take some Calypso Coral and I'm going to just fit as many things on here as possible. And then hopefully you'll get an idea of like some of the things you can do with this. Um, since we're talking about floral groupings, we're gonna start with <clears throat> these florals. And then I get to show you my, my bag of paper florist goodies. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill that up and then of course save all these. I'm not using them all on this card. All right. Let's pull all that off. this away. I'm going to work on my card front. And so I'm going to just do a simple embossing folder on this piece of, um, what's it called? White centered paper. So this is the new Azure Afternoon. And there's a pack of specialty paper that has mostly all the new, not the new in colors, but newer colors like Berry um, and Peacock and Lagoon, Lost Lagoon. And the center of this paper is white, which is different. That's not what I wanted. I need this one. Um, Stampin' Up's cardstock is dyed all the way through. Um, so this is specialty paper that has white 
purposefully in the center. All right, so this is a new embossing folder. I used it last week, Exposed Brick. It's just one of those kind of nice distressed looking folders. Great for any kind of background. All right, so let me move this out of the way. And let's get our pieces here. All right, so I've decided since I wanted to do my card in Azure Afternoon, I wanted to just go with one of the uh, color coach combinations. So I decided on this one right here because it's just kind of bright and sunny. It's got Calypso Coral and Crushed Curry. Let's put these back. Okay, so now we've got lots of coral to choose from, but I think I'm just gonna use that one. All right, so we're talking about a type of cluster and this is called a floral group. So we need to pick a base and one of the types of a floral group is just like a, what I would call like a swag, right? It's just gonna be like a, a soft curve. And so I'm gonna use this um, leaf branch as my base, but I'm also going to use a shape um, to attach it to. So I'm going to just put them both. So this one kind of has two bases. Um, you can kind of, you know, think of it also as this is a base and this is a greenery piece, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to make my floral grouping along this. So that's kind of why I'm calling it the base. And I've already cut out some of these other flowers and leaves. We gotta love all the stitch. So these are the leaves that come with the paper florist. And then there's all these delightful little centers. It's just so wonderful. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here while I'm putting those together. All right, so let's get busy putting these together. So I'm gonna stagger these opposite. Just make a cute little bunchy flower in blue. And then this one, I don't know what type of flower this would be, but it's a little looser. It's going to stagger that as well. And then we're going to make a tiny little yellow or crushed curry with these cute little pieces here like that. Okay, so those are going to be our three flowers. So one of the things to consider when you're making a floral grouping is how many flowers. And um, bottom line is however many flowers that you want to use is the right answer because um, it's, it's your floral grouping, right? But a lot of things are designed automatically to have um, an odd number of flowers and then to have them be different sizes. So I've kind of purposely picked three of the flowers from this paper florist that are different sizes just to kind of create some balance and when you kind of put them together along our little leaf there you can kind of see yeah that that will kind of go with the flow there all right so what we need to do now is pick our centers and again i cut these out ahead of time all kinds of little different goodies you can pick. So I'm just gonna mix and match the colors here. I think that's what I wanted to happen there. Let's see, can we do this guy here? Yes, that's what we want. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna attach those. So last week when I was working on this, um, and I don't know, I always forget to get it out, but it's really helpful to have the, the silicone mat when you're working with these little clusters because if, especially if you're using the liquid glue, sometimes just the way things come together, the glue leaks out, right? So I'm gonna glue this on this open leaf here and clearly I'm gonna get some glue. So if you use the silicone mat, it's nice because you can just let that glue dry and then rub it right off and you're not getting glue on your surface area. The other thing that I, as I was playing with this more this past week is um, I realized a lot of the clusters I made last week, um, I kept kind of going out of the um, scope of my card. So if you kind of make yourself just a little template, so this is just the size of a card front and I've put the silicone mat over it so I can still see it underneath. And that way as I'm working, on how this is gonna go on the front of a card. I can kind of have the dimension of my card behind there so I don't go over. So I'm just gonna kind of put these in order on here um, in like size from biggest to smallest. And then we're gonna stick these leaves in here. So we've got our cluster elements um, are the, the base and the secondary shape could be this um, and we've got our greenery and the flowers in our flower groupings are the accents. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of trying to hit that hot, that odd number there. And um, the odd number is going to also include the leaves. Okay, so I am going to attach this leaf to the square just to give it a little more stability. And I'm just gonna go right along the edge. So as we're making this um, kind of swag style here, and then we'll put this blue one first, since that's the biggest one. All right, has anybody um, have these dies yet? And you've played with them. I saw, I saw Mimi. She's been playing with them, so making some gorgeous things. So I'm going to place the flowers first. The color coach charts are um, a. Uh, PDF that Stampin' Up! shares with us and so I have it on my um, on my blog you can get it there uh, if you search for in colors I think the the new in color post will come up okay so now I'm just going to take some of these green leaves and just kind of add them to the mix. And again, I'm just gonna try to kind of follow the line of this gold piece. And then I'm gonna also just make sure that my leaves are kind of all going in different directions, the green ones, so that they're kind of giving some interest there. Okay. I like that, kind of a bright and happy little color combination. So one of the things that you can add also as an accent anytime that just kind of really makes it look beautiful is more um, foil. So um, I love this punch, this um, bow punch here. I think this is you know, one of my favorite things to help make clusters with. Um, it's not a bundle. They're separate, but they um, are designed to coordinate together. And so I punched a ton of these leaves out of some gold, distressed gold. 
so that they'd be ready to plop onto cards. I've got a bunch of those in here. I also cut them out of, uh, or punched them out of vellum because this is a great um, extra layering piece. So if you just wanna add a couple more, you know, things so that the gold has different types of leaves, it, it adds a nice little feature. All right, so the, let's finish up our swag here. I have a bunch of other things to show you. So I'm gonna put one coming out this way too. So now we've got just a little bit fuller, kind of a little swag. This little piece, this is in the paper florist dies. This you can roll together and make a lovely center, but I thought it would be kind of cute to just pop a little green over on this side, like a little uh, fringe. So I'm gonna just put that over here. Just to make that a little bit more, so it's an accent. A little more interest. Okay, now we need a greeting. And so I'm gonna use one of the ones that I previously embossed in white on black cardstock. And we'll just pop that up. Let's see, I think I like it down here better, more centered. Okay, so here is our focal point cluster. Now, since I've got my little thing down there, I can make sure I kept it within the confines of my card and I did thankfully so let's put it on our card front so this is that white paper and I was since I embossed it I was just gonna try to see if we sanded it if some of that white would come through I haven't tried this before so oh yeah we used to have something like this. So it's kind of working the same way. So I'm just, this is a little sand, like a little piece of sandpaper on here. And so it's gonna allow some of that white to pop through. Yeah, I like that. Remember when you're talking about these really beautiful focal point clusters that <clears throat> your card base and card front really just need to coordinate with your cluster and just kind of support the theme or color of it. It doesn't need to be intricate or complicated because your focal point is, is what's making it really happy. So let's attach it. I'm gonna just make sure I get a little bit of glue on all the parts. And all get glued down so it doesn't really matter what the back side looks like. I'm just gonna center it. Right, I like it. It's got that little pop of foil in it, so it's got already some sparkle. So the last thing we need are embellishments. So let's use some gold sequins. We'll kind of carry through our gold theme here. And you just want an odd number. Three is always a great amount. Although I really like two right there. Looks pretty good because we've got all this gold. I'm just gonna put two. I'm gonna just fuck my own 
my own formula numbers and go with two. All right, so there's our first card and this is just one way that you can make a floral grouping and this is like the swag version. So let's put these extra coral pieces. So here's my bag of paper florist fun. I just took up a lot of brights and just went crazy cutting them all out, but now they're ready. So now I can just kind of dump this out, look for some colors, right? How exciting. All right, let me make sure I get all those pieces in there. Okay. So let's just kind of look at another cluster here. So here's my base. And then we have um, our floral cluster. We don't really have a secondary shape unless you wanna count this as a secondary shape, but the it's a little bit different when you're just doing flowers because you know these end up being like, this is really the accent and kind of those leaves are a lot of that, but I'm gonna add this to the background. So this is that beautiful die cut, and I cut it out of um, this bright and beautiful paper using this beautiful Azure again. And so I'm just gonna tack this down. So this is actually gonna be our base base. But I guess I just want you to see like, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful little cluster here, but you can kind of increase the interest by adding something detailed as a base as well. So we'll put that down. This is a simple basic white card with the timber wood grained embossed so then we'll put this on here. So instead of a swag, like this first card, this is just uh, what I would call uh, a bunch, right? This is just a flower bunch. It's just like a... center that. Okay, so we've got three flowers again, different sizes, and we've got one, two, three, four, five leaves to kind of keep that balanced. I've got three colors of green. And all we need are some embellishments. this lemon lime gorgeous just make a little little triangle there embellishments definitely work better um, in sets that are odd or like if you find a great spot for two like I did here and then just always kind of think of them in a triangle in like a long uh, skinny triangle I don't know what that kind of triangle is, but. All right, so that's kind of a bunch. This is a swag. This is also with the paper florist dies. Okay, so um, it's nice to have that base. And again, you're not really gonna see the base on this um, because we're gonna fill it up with that bunch of flowers. Okay, but I just kind of want you to see different, different ways kind of put those bunches together. So here we've got three flowers again, plus this little sprig of flowers. We've got um, one, two, three, four, 
five with this pops of green. And then we've put some of that distressed foil just a little bit in there. And then this is an accent just made with a piece of designer series paper and I just curled it with my bone folder and tied a knot. So you could sit with those paper florist dies and just create a bunch of little clusters and then plop them onto cards. Okay, so we're kind of moving into, um, we're gonna talk about the open frame kind of cluster. So this is not really an open frame, but this is like a window. So a lot of times when you have these great little focal point clusters, one of the great ways to put them on your card is to, if you have a window card um, that kind of peeks through, or this is like a faux window because it's not really peeking through to the inside of the card, but it's, it's going off the card, so it's kind of interesting. Um, and we're just gonna attach our, our big old focal point right there. So we'll add our glue. So again, this is like a bunch, a flower bunch. I guess you could call it a bouquet kind of. Um, to me, a bouquet would be like if you've got all the stems, you know, kind of going in one direction, like an actual bouquet of flowers. So I think those are the three different types of uh, floral groupings would be the swag and the, the bunch and then a bouquet type. And I didn't actually get time to make a bouquet because I got into these paper florist dies and... Uh, never looked back because they are really interesting to play with. Compact bunch. That's a good, Lynn, that's a good term. I like that, a compact bunch. All right. Those are happy cards, aren't they? All right, so working with our floral grouping. So switch gears for a second. And let's look at a different stamp set that um, can create a floral grouping. So this is the um, dies and the Dainty Delight stamp set. Here are the dies. They are not bundled anymore because they were bundled last year, but in addition to being able to cut out the pieces in the stamp set, which I thought those were really great to have in my greenery. So I went ahead and, you know, just cut all these on white with black ink ready to color and they're in my greenery bowl. It also has a lot of pieces um, to create a floral grouping. So this would be a swag because it has that arc to it. Um, and it, it has a totally different vibe, doesn't it? Because it is so dainty, even though, you know, I've got um, similar um, coloring, it's just right, it's just different. So if you like things that are, you know, if this is kind of too bold for you, this would be um, a really happy die set to get because you automatically get this beautiful swag leaf, it's already cut. So you can make, you know, a swag with it. You can actually put two together and make a, a nice big oval. And then it has all these little flowers um, that you can cut out. Okay. So then here is uh, another one. So I cut out a bunch and then I had leftovers. And I'm like, well, we're going to make another swag. But this time I put it similar to here. I put it around um, a faux window. And I played with this pecan pie color, which is beautiful. It's such a warm, but yet happy. It's not a, it's not, sometimes browns are just so brown. <laughs> but this one is really beautiful and I haven't played with pecan pie yet. So, all right, so we've got some swag here. And then of course, 
my other, um, we used it last week, the uh, Timeless Arrangements bundle. I've got some pieces from that and I've got some pieces from Dainty Delight here. Here's that greenery that I just kind of cut out and colored. So we have our base, we have our secondary shape, we have our um, accents, I would say, are, is this flower and these colored pieces, and then we have the greenery here, and then our embellishments on a very simple background. Okay, let's just, we won't let these get too far. We'll put them right over here. And let's look at this open frame concept. Okay, so I kind of wanted to just rip the Band-Aid off of this stamp set here. I earned this one for free, so I haven't really been able to play with it yet because it's still so new. But um, what is really nice about some of these bundles in the Stampin' Up! catalog is that all the elements are already there for you um, so that, you know, you don't you don't need to have a bunch of separate things. If you, if you really examine what comes in a stamp and die bundle, you're, you're going to already have kind of the accents, um, the, you know, pieces that you need because the stamp set's already designed to cluster and go together. So we've got different size flowers, different size leaves. This one has greetings too. And then you've got these pieces that don't cut out dies. They just make greenery on their own. So there's several, you know, bundles um, if you just kind of look at them from a different uh, perspective as a focal point cluster making bundle, I think you'll find that you can pick one or two and then you have a lot of choices. So let's, I picked some colors based on some designer series paper that I'm gonna use. So let's just get our stamping and cutting out of the way. I'm going to use Calypso Coral, Crushed Curry, Garden Green, and Fresh Freesia. And I wouldn't have put these colors necessarily together on my own, but I wanted to use some of this paper. This is called Delightfully Eclectic. This is on sale. This is a huge pack of paper. Um, there's 48 sheets and they're all different and they all kind of coordinate with different things but they're all really standalone as well so this is one side and so I picked the colors based on colors that are in this paper specifically this piece right here which I'm going to make our open frame out of so that's where I got those colors So let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna do some stamping off because I want to, these are all two-step um, images that you can do two-step or not, but you've got your beautiful distressed uh, first step and then you've got the details. So I'm going to do the bigger flower in crushed curry. And then I'm gonna use the same color for the background, but I'm going to stamp it on scratch paper first to get a lighter value. So I'm just gonna take off some of the ink and then fill in. So we've got a nice crushed curry flower. And then we'll do the same thing with fresh freesia. So I'm gonna stamp the outline first, full strength. And then I'm gonna stamp off with the 
solid image, so that's a little bit lighter. And then we'll do a tiny little coral flower. So cute. Put that guy away. And then we've got our leaves. This is a great um, little shape for the leaf. So there's our outline. And I'm gonna do the same thing, stamp that off. So pretty. And then we've got this little sprig. you see this fun paper but let's cut these out first All right, who's gonna work on a bowl full of elements before you stamp next time? It was really fun. Um, you know, I like, I like my homework, um, but it was really fun to just kind of, I turned on a movie and I just got up lots of colors of greens, green cardstock, different uh, colors that coordinated with designer series paper and just made a whole bunch of those elements so that I could just kind of throw some clusters together in the future. I love this distinctive distressed type stamping. I will always buy <laughs> those stamp sets because they make me so happy. I just love how that looks watercolored. I never get tired of it. All right, so I've already cut out these detailed ones in garden green cardstock so that I would have them ready to go. And whatever I don't use, then I'm just gonna put right back into my little um, my little bowls. Although I need to find other containers. So those are my, those are my, I use those bowls. <laughs> All right, so here's what I did to make an open frame. So now we're moving into an open frame type of cluster. And um, I just saw a lot of examples of this when I was kind of doing my research. And so that's kind of why I made it a type of frame. And the way that you create this is is with a nesting die, if you have them. Um, any two that are right next to each other in size, you cut them at the same time, and then you get a frame with them. So I used the two largest squares from the Stylish Shapes dies. If you don't have any shape dies, um, you just start with a square, and then you use your paper trimmer um, to cut out the inside. It's not that difficult. So of course I'm gonna use the frame for this card, but now I already have this beautiful um, square that I can just put into my um, pile of bases. Okay, so let's bring this back in with our little guide underneath there. So I'm gonna um, just kind of make a tilty frame on the card front. And actually what you can do Let's put this card front together and then we'll put that underneath and then we can see exactly 
what we're looking at. So this one side of this designer series paper looks like writing paper, like loose leaf, but it coordinates with the colors. And then I loved this little piece. So I'm just gonna put a little bottom here and then this frame is gonna be on the top. But I cut out the lace piece that was with these dies and I wanted to use that as an accent, not on my focal point, but on this piece of paper here. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of that peeking out. going to go down at the bottom of my card. All right, so let's put that under here. So then I'll have an actual visual when I'm putting this together and I won't go over. So we're going to start with our largest piece and just kind of figure out where we want that. This is such a fun little flower because you can obviously make it, like if you're gonna use the stem, you could make it like a half flower either way, but it also is like perfect to just kind of tuck right under there. It's already telling you what to do, which I love. I love this little piece here too, um, which I cut out in green, but then I thought I'm gonna add another accent color and use um, navy because that's one of the colors here. And then we'll put in some, so that's greenery, that's greenery. We've got our three flowers. We're gonna just bunch them together and then we'll add our leaves. So I'm just kind of laying it out, making sure that I like where it's heading. All these cute little pieces here and we can add some more in between. So I think that's gonna come together really nicely on our open frame. So let's start gluing because we're confident, right? And we'll stick this. Okay, now let me check this on the card here because I want to tilt that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we'll tuck this guy underneath. So I'm really just going to put kind of around the corner of this open frame where I'm gonna make the bunch. And we'll just, we've got the basic um, bunch set here, but we can always just add a few more of these tiny little leaves to make it fuller. Okay, where are we gonna put that guy? I think he's gonna go right here. More. I'm gonna put him right there. 
but my fingers are sticky. That is the, that's the hazard, but I like that. Let's see how it looks on the card front. Lots of glue. Oh, that's cute. I like that. We're just gonna kind of tilt it. So if you wanted to, with your open frame, of course you could you could fill it with a different pattern paper. Um, that would be cute too. I'm gonna leave it like this, but then I'm gonna stamp the words in here. And we'll just stamp them right onto that paper, love it. All right, so we are gonna finish this up with some embellishments. one on this guy because he's screaming please please do that and then we'll put in our little triangle so we've got that long triangle there all right so the bases are open frame in this case the secondary shape is really uh the flowers um, and the greenery pieces, and then the accents are also the flowers. So, you know, it's a little bit different um, with the floral grouping, like I said, and kind of how you call those that secondary shape, but you absolutely could if you didn't want to, you know, stamp right there. Just, you could just put another little piece on there of some size to create your your secondary shape if you didn't want to stamp right on the card front. All right, so that's an open frame. Easy, right? So, okay, so here's another open frame. I used a lot of those fun, bright colors again. I have the base being the open frame and then my secondary base here is a gingham circle. And then that was where I kind of created um, a little bit of a, a swag shape, kind of. Um, it's kind of a mixture between a bunch and, and a swag, I guess. What did you call it, Lynn? A control no put it <laughs> I liked your term so I'm gonna put this one on a basic um, plain card front this is the new pebbled path paired with gray granite it's a fabulous uh, color combination with just a beautiful neutral so we're gonna just center that right there Okay, and 
then we'll use one of our cutouts. So you can go and get all your favorite greetings, emboss them in white ink on black. And stamp them in black ink on white. And have them ready to go. These are the Pebbled Path in color enamel dots. They're just perfect. Isn't that pretty? Like you would, you, I didn't, um, I wasn't sure when I was gonna put this really bright um, cluster on, but then I really liked when I paired it with that. That neutral, that was, this is a new neutral for me. Me trying new things. So here is uh, another one. So we have an open frame, but I went back and filled it. I used that technique from last week where I just used the words and I stamped them multiple times to create kind of a distressed. So we have our, our base, we have a, a secondary kind of shape with our greeting there, and then lots and lots of florals, but I've got, again, the three flowers with three um, sprigs and then one, two, three, four, five, six, six leaves but different colors. And of course you can create a, an open frame or a cluster, you know, with a wreath, right? So here's a little wreath from the Wreath Builder set, I think it's called. But instead of flowers, I've got hearts. Um, so those are my, um, my secondary, you know, this is the base. We've got the greenery, secondary shapes here, the accents of these little pops. So you really just need to put that onto a card front. So the, the little bit of gold, remember anytime you add some foiling of some kind. So this is a frame created by this Darling Details dies. So it just cuts the hole into the, both of these just cut, they don't cut out a rectangle, they cut out a hole that's in the shape, a decorative, and then I just trimmed around it. And so this is just, I'm just gonna plop that right onto that card. straight. And these are the layering leaves um, stamp set with the the bow punch. Okay. So I don't know if you consider this an open frame or not, but I, I kind of like the, the idea of the open frame because a lot of times we like to make those window cards so you can actually make it be a window card, which I didn't do anything like that, but um, kind of did those fall windows. But you can also think of just making frames, right? Okay, I've got one last card to make with you. And we're going to look at this bundle here. This, this is another new one. This is my first time playing with it, so I, again, have not scratched the surface at all. This is on page 65. 
of the catalog. Let's peek at it. Here we go. This, again, this is a distinctive stamp set, so this was one of the first things on my list um, that I wanted to play with or purchase and then play with. Okay, so I've already cut out the pieces. Let's look at the dies because this is one of those stamp sets where you've already got all the elements. Um, you've got your greetings, you have a background stamp, um, this beautiful splatter dot here. You have all the dies that cut, not only cut out the flowers and the flowers are already sized perfectly for groupings. Got two leaves. Um, and you've got these tiny little accent um, pieces, but then you have these beautiful greenery pieces that um, you can cut out, you know, to use as those supports for your clusters. So I picked a different color combination. So we're going to do an open frame and I'm going to use this um, funky piece. I don't know what you call this shape but there's a new die set called Nested Essentials. So if you've got a wish list, you might wanna put this on your wish list because these are really interesting. We've got the rounded rectangle, the, um, the banner and pieces, and then this shape here, which at first I was like, well, that's, I don't know, I don't know if I'd like that, but it, it's really an interesting, um, it's an interesting design. Okay, so that's gonna be, We'll just put the, my card front behind there. And I picked some pinks and reds to create. And here's the leaves. And then I picked those for my greenery. So, I mean, the, the nice thing about this, like you just stamp them all and it's like, it's boom, ready to go, it's done have to figure out where you want to put everything. So we're just going to do a bunch. And let's put this back here. I love that leaf. It just is like perfect. Got a red one. So this is Petal Pink, and this is Sweet Sorbet, and then this is Cherry Cobbler. Do I want to do that? Let's put another leaf in here. We'll think about that. So I chose a uh, gold, foil, just plain old gold foil here. And you can always just cut that into two so that you can use it in a couple places. I'm gonna put this in the back, this greenery here. So let me just put a couple dots back there. Stick one of these back here. Maybe up here. Yeah, these pieces go together so smoothly. Sticky, sticky. There we go. Let that sit for a minute. Susan's calling this an elongated hexagon. Yeah, that's perfect. So here is my secondary shape here. I'm just gonna put that right across. I'm just make sure I have it straight. Okay. 
Okay, you know what I didn't do? I didn't pay attention to my card underneath here. Let's see, did I make it fit? Ooh, it's gonna be tight. I got so excited. So let's see if I can wiggle this one off. There we go. That's what I kind of like when I assemble it. I just put a little bit of glue that way if I need to adjust it. So I'm gonna just put it in a little bit further like that. That's better. Okay, simple card front. Let's just put some more greetings in the background. Let me bring out my scratch paper. I love that this is so happy that you are my person. Um, but then this comes in the stamp set that says, every thought of you makes me smile. So we'll just kind of create words in the background. And then I want to just take that little splatter and we'll just do a little bit of mellow mossy meadow. Kind of like those little dots. Just around the edge. And then we'll put that on our card base of the same color crumb cake. All right, I think I might have tilted this guy. So let's see if I can wiggle him straight there. There we go. Okay, so um, other things that you can do that I haven't done that are really pretty is to, to make those little, what I like to call ribbon nests, where you add an accent layer of um, just kind of some twisted thread and you add it underneath. Um, so we could add, I think I'm going to try this gold. We'll just make a little bow here. just to kind of carry our little bits of gold. Stick that right under there. Okay. That looks straight. I, I might go back and put a little um, tiny, tiny little dimensional right under that so that kind of sits a little more sturdy. So the only thing that we need now are our embellishments.
I'm so excited about this open frame. I didn't even think about what embellishments I wanted to use. See how these iridescent ones look. We did it. Thank you for coming along this journey with me. Let's bring our cards back and take a look at them again. So I'm going to put together a little list on the blog post that coordinates with this um, tutorial. I'll just kind of make a list of some of my favorite bundles. Um, if you are interested in thinking, well, I maybe I need a new bundle to do some clusters. I'll put my top, my top favorites there. Um, but this is definitely one of them. This beautiful textured floral is great. Obviously these paper, if you like to sit in um, putts with, uh, Paper flowers, this will make you very happy. All right, so when you're doing a floral uh, grouping uh, to make a focal point cluster, think in terms of kind of the swag design or into just kind of the bunch. And then, like I said, I didn't, um, I ran out of time to make a bouquet kind of cluster, but I think there are a lot of dyes out there that have longer stems and it would be really pretty to make um, a bouquet type of, of cluster as well. Then I'll put that on my to-do list. Um, and then think about how these floral clusters or any kind of focal point cluster will look next to um, a window in your card or an open type of frame. So much fun. I've really had a blast breaking this down. Um, and so I hope I hope that you are finding it useful too. Definitely throw your opinion into the comments. Um, I would love to hear your feedback on that and see what you think. Susan, you're speechless. You're so sweet. <laughs> Hello, yes. I'm just gonna take a minute to read the comments. Um, so, and I will give you a little chat. And if um, if you don't wanna stick around, thank you so much for watching. I am so glad that you joined me today. And I challenge you to um, get out your uh, dies and your punches. Make yourself some bowls of goodness so that you've got your your, um, your bases sorted and your greenery and your accents and you'll just be ready to throw some things together. Hello. Thank you. You guys are very sweet. I, I'm glad you enjoyed this one. Rose almost ordered Darling Details. Yeah, you might have to put it back on the wish list. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. The thing is, is what I, I love is that this the style of this stamp set is whimsical. So, you know, those kinds of clusters have a little bit more kind of cute whimsy to them as opposed to this one, which is very serious, I guess is not the right word, but it's just more... Um, realistic looking type of watercolored flowers as opposed to when you cut out the different flower shapes like the paper florist dies have a um what would you call this kind of style they're just very simple 
I'm not sure. I have to think about that, the style of these, but it's, it's more simple. Um, and then you've got, you know, the contrast here where these are um, have kind of that really dainty, precise look to them. So you have to kind of think about what what is your style, you know, what which um, which kind of design, because I think Stampin' Up! has got you covered as far as floral bundles covered um, based on your style. Thank you, Wendy. She's going to watch it many times. <laughs> Lynn, you're so sweet. I love blowing minds. That's your, that's like the best, the best thing you could say. Um, I love, um, I love a challenge. And so again, thank you to Joanna Strong who emailed me and she's like, you know, I'd really like to kind of understand how to make focal point clusters. Thank you, Pam. Hi, Julie. Hey, Maribel. Hi, Liz. Good to see you. Hi, Nidia. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yes. If you need a catalog, just email me. My, there's a, there'll be a link in the description box. Email me, or there's also a link that you can just sign up for a catalog, and then I will send one to you. Thank you so much. Don't forget about the special for the month. Um, you won't want to miss that card kit. So um, use the hostess code and homework. Do your homework, and then um, I want to see it. So come join our Facebook group called Robin's Really Super Stampers and um, you can showcase your work there. There's already some people who took last week's uh, focal point clusters and posted some amazing designs so you have to come check those out. Thank you so much again for your time. I will respond to the comments um, later but thank you so very much and have a great week and we'll see you again next time. Bye!